Hello everybody, welcome back to the ASUS ROG YouTube channel. This is JJ once again. We've got something pretty cool for you this time around. We're going to be focusing on two key technologies uh, that both utilize a hardware and software implementation, RAM caching as well as RAM disks. Now as part of the X79 platform, and specifically ASUS's X79 motherboards, this platform offers significantly more bandwidth as well as higher density memory support. Now we've been able to utilize memory in both uh, specialized environments like RAM caches or RAM disks for quite some time, but we've really hit a, a sweet spot in this chipset in terms of what's capable. Historically, we're looking at motherboards that generally were limited to four DIMM configurations, and prior to four gigabyte DIMMs being released to the market, you were talking about generally only maybe about up to eight gigabytes in your system, which generally wasn't uh, large enough to be able to implement some of the more flexible configurations you want, helping to extend performance. What we're going to be showing you today is actually how to take advantage of not only the additional bandwidth, but the additional DIMM slots and go ahead and maximize and have a higher level of performance for your X79 platform on ASUS boards. So we're going to go ahead and actually take a look at the performance characteristics of a normal mechanical hard drive installation on the X79 platform. Um, now this is going to be key in terms of helping us look at a compare contrast versus what a RAM disk would yield us. So here we've gone ahead and actually run both ASSSD, Crystal Disk Mark, as well as PC Mark 7, all to give us a relative idea in terms of the performance that we have on a modern generational mechanical hard drive. So in terms of disclosure, we actually have a Western Digital 2 terabyte Black Series SATA 6G 64 gigabyte, excuse me, 64 megabyte cache uh, hard drive. So pretty much the fastest 2 terabyte mechanical hard drive you can get on the market. And we're gonna take a look at the performance metrics. So here, on the left hand side, we actually have our results relative to ASSSD as well as Crystal Disk Mark and PC Mark 7. For PC Mark 7, we can see that we have a score of approximately 2,338, which is quite solid for the platform. And one of the key metrics of application performance that we want to look at is starting application performance, which is right now rated at 4.5 megabytes a second. And we can see here, in terms of the sequential performance in Crystal Disk Mark, we have up to 475.9 uh, for the read and for the write, approximately 145.7. Uh, for ASSSD, because it uses a different type of actually data transfer mechanism and the actual data in terms of how it's actually packaged is different, we have a, a different final re uh, read and write performance result. So approximately 127.21 megabytes and for the write, 137.41. Now, one of the real key items outside of just these general high level uh, sequential uh, performance numbers is going to be copy performance or application performance in the real world. So here we have an ISO, a program, and a game, and we can see the actual duration and the actual throughput that was offered per this actual application. Now, one of the last items we want to take a look at is also 4K performance. 4K is really key because this is overall uh, the kind of the key value of the operating system that defines your, your overall application performance as well as usable application uh, performance. So most of the actual files in the terms of the operating system, the way it's structured, are going to be utilizing this type of file system. So this is a key area that the higher that it goes upon directly ties into the usability and the performance, the overall snappiness of your operating system. So we've got an idea of our actual mechanical volume. Let's see what things look like when we're looking at an actual SSD. So here we've tapped Corsair's uh, Force 3 120 gigabyte SATA 6G SSD, so super fast SSD, and we can see here already in terms of PC mark, we've done a huge jump. We went from 2,338 to 3,166, and that key value that we looked at before starting application performance was 19.02. So a big jump from that 4.5 to now 19.02. And when we take a look at some of the other relative ben benchmarks, that we looked at previously on the mechanical volume, we can see a huge uptick. Uh, looking at ASSSD, we moved up from 127 and 137 for read and write to now 516 and 135. So a big jump up, up in the overall performance. And especially when we take a look at the real world applications as well, we can see a big drop in terms of the amount of time to complete game program and ISO application performance. And 4K, that previous one that we talked about, huge jump there. We've gone over from 0.325 to now 31 megabytes on the read and on the write from 2.356 to now 87.55. So we're gonna take a look at what does the system look like when utilizing that SSD, we actually take advantage of an eight gigabyte RAM cache. So once again, we'll open up PC Mark 7 
And when we open up PC Mark 7 and we compare it across the board, we're going to see a pretty sizable difference in terms of the overall performance. So to recap in order, we've got our mechanical volume at 2,338. We have our SSD by itself at 3,166. And then we have our same SSD, but with an eight gigabyte RAM cache at 6,543. So a huge increase in the overall performance gain. And we can see here that when looking once again at that key application metric, in terms of starting application performance, we've jumped from 19.02 megabytes to 122.99 megabytes. When we look at the rest of the values as well, across the board, we have a consistent increase, whether it's game loading, antivirus scanning, importing pictures, video editing, doesn't matter, you're gonna get a huge increase. And this is something that's going to be running invisibly in the background, giving you extended performance versus just running an SSD by itself or versus just running a mechanical volume. So lastly, once again, we want to take a look at the actual benchmark scores here as well. And we can see that when even comparing it to the SSD, we have a huge difference. So here on this side, we've got the mechanical volume, we've got the SSD, and then we have our RAM cache configuration. And under the RAM cache configuration, it's not even close. So at the bottom end, we were at 475 megabytes on the read. The top end now, we're at, at over five gigabytes. Uh, on the bottom end for the right performance, 145 megabytes, and at the top end, 2.4 gigabytes worth of right performance data. And once again, the real key value, which is not even close, is the 4K performance. Here on our RAM cache configuration, 459.1 and 121.1 uh, versus even our SSD, which was 31.39 and 87.55. So overall, this gives you a little bit of an idea relative to the actual performance that's capable on ASUS X79 motherboards and enabling a RAM cache and taking advantage of quad channel and an 8 dim design. With a RAM disk, it's a little bit different because we're running an actual persistent volume. So by being a persistent volume, this means that the volume is kept even when you're actually uh, shutting down or rebooting the system. This is a locable installed volume, just like you have your C drive, it would be your D drive or whatever else you would want to call it. So we're going to take a look at the performance characteristics of a current either mechanical or, or SSD based system versus what's capable with a RAM disk. So here we've got our mechanical hard drive performance as we can see that at the bottom end it's 127.21 megabytes uh, for the read and for the write 137.41 megabytes. When we go ahead and we jump over to an actual SSD we know that we're going to considerably be extending the performance as well. Uh, for the SSD, we can see that we've made a huge jump up from 127 and 137 accordingly to now 516 and 135. And one of the other key areas is that we have 4K performance. We can see here that the 4K performance is 31.39 and then 87.55 uh, with strong sequential and write performance. So we know that we have a strong increase in performance going over from mechanical volume to a statistics SATA 6G SSD. So what happens if we take advantage of the remaining memory that we're not using for our RAM cache and we use it as an actual RAM disk to let's say install your web browser, games, applications. Imagine running uh, Outlook, running your, your web browser, running Photoshop, Office, all directly actually from your 10, 12, 16 gigabyte RAM disk. Even games, um, some of the current generation games on the market are generally between about 9 to 12 gigabytes, enough to allow you to install one key game there, run through the gameplay experience and get an increase in performance. So we're going to start at the bottom. By default, your X79 boards are going to be running at 1333 for your quad channel setup. And we can see here we already have a huge increase in the relative performance. So when first taking a look at a mechanical hard drive, we can see that it's not even close. We've got a read performance of once again, 127 and 137 for the write, and we've jumped over to 4.2 gigabytes and 4.8 gigabytes in terms of the write performance and the read performance. And in Crystal Disk, we can see also here, it's even higher, we're at 4.899, essentially 4.9 gigabytes in terms of the read performance, and a little bit over seven gigabytes for the write performance. So we just destroy the overall performance of the mechanical hard drive. And one of those key definers as well is that real world performance applications have also taken a strong advantage, whether it's the ISO, the, the game, or the program, we can see you have a huge drop in terms of that. And once again, our 4K performance, look at the delta, 0 0.0325 versus 1300, or 2.356 versus a little bit over 1000 megabytes or one gigabyte. 
When looking even at our SSD, we still see the same in terms of the RAM is, is such a significantly faster environment to be able to run our key applications from, where we have that increase from 475.7 megabytes on the read, 168.6 megabytes on the write, to now 4.899 and set a little bit over 7,000 mega, 7, megabytes or seven gigabytes. Now, one of the key advantages that we have when we're working with memory as opposed to a physical bus such as the SATA bus. SATA bus is currently limited to only 600 megabytes and when considering overhead, your general peak is going to be somewhere between about 525 to about 575 in terms of the performance. Now this can be slightly eclipsed with RAID configurations where you could get up to over one gigabyte worth of continuous data, but we can see we're easily exceeding that not only in our RAM cache, but now in our RAM disk configurations. But one of the cool things that you have with memory is that you can run higher frequencies, which allow for higher bandwidth. So we started off with 1333. Now let's take a look at what we get out of our system when we jump to the top end at 2133. Now we've spent a lot of time on our boards to tune and configure the support for higher densities and higher frequencies, and that's definitely what we're showcasing here. When we take a look at the 1333, we saw that we peaked out at about 4.9 gigabytes for the read performance and almost 7.1 gigabytes for the write performance. When we jump over to 2133, we're now at over six gigabytes for the read and almost eight gigabytes, seven point, excuse me, uh, 7,900 megabytes for the write performance. So an overall huge increase uh, just by also increasing the actual frequency. So whether you're running a basic entry level kit at 1333, you're gonna get a huge amount of performance if you're pushing the system and really pushing up those clock frequencies, you can continue to extend the overall benefit and continue to increase the performance throughput. We can also see that that still holds true even for general application performance. We continue to bring that down. So overall, that gives you an idea of the relative performance benefits you have for an actual RAM disk environment. For more information, please head over to our ASUS ROG forums where we have detailed guides and more benchmarks.